Chapter 5 is all about the gas laws. I'm hoping that this is a short and sweet chapter for us. A lot of it really is review from first year. And a lot of gas laws are really common sense. You would all know this, that gas is completely filled their container. Uh, there's a lot of space between gas particles, so they can be compressed. They'll completely mix with any other gas particles. And they exert pressure on their surroundings. Uh, that pressure is caused by collisions. Caused by collisions. Eventually, when we try to explain gas laws, a lot of it goes back to collisions and what's happening to these gas particles. The more collisions with themselves and with the walls of their container, the more pressure will be experienced inside the container. And again, that's kind of why gases completely fill their container. There is no limit to where these gas particles can collide in a closed container. Uh, you're going to notice some units used in this chapter that we haven't had to use a whole lot yet, especially when it comes to measuring pressure. Uh, we've talked about measuring atmospheric pressure and vapor pressure a little bit. Uh, now you're going to see pressure in a few different units. Uh, we've kind of mentioned this term uh, standard temperature and pressure. These would all be acceptable units of pressure. You might see millimeters mercury, also called a tor. Um, that's usually the unit that we'll use in the lab measured off a barometer. Uh, we might use atmospheres, that's kind of an English unit like feet and inches. Or the other one that's pretty common is kilopascal, and that would be a good metric unit. We'll use that one in the lab a little bit too. All of these units at the bottom, all of these measurements of pressure at the bottom are considered standard. So one atmosphere, 760 millimeters mercury, 760 tor, or the other one that's most common. I'll even go as far as crossing this one off. We'll probably use kilopascal. About 101 kilopascal would be standard pressure. So what can we do with these units? We can start changing the variables to see how one affects another. And so again, these gas laws, you've probably had these since you were a baby. If there's anybody in here that's never heard of Boyle's Law, uh, you may have missed the boat back in fifth grade or something like that. Uh, Robert Boyle was the first to study the relationship between pressure and volume of a gas in a closed container. That's what we mean by a trapped gas. Uh, he came up with this idea that at a given temperature, so at a constant temperature, volume and pressure are indirectly proportional. If I multiply volume and pressure, I always seem to get a constant. But look what happens with this data. At my largest volumes, I have my smallest pressures. And again, uh, what they'll do on the AP test is not only ask you to do calculations, but also to explain what's happening in terms of particle behavior. And I would say, okay, well, if I have my largest volume, there's a lot of space for these particles to collide. So in a given space then, there could be less collisions than if I had a smaller volume. Less collisions would create less pressure. And so again, when I have my small volumes, there's not as much surface area on the inside of my container. So in a given space, there will be more collisions. And those collisions will cause more pressure. Now, we did mention one thing. It states here that at a given temperature, meaning at constant temperature. There really are kind of four variables that affect gas behavior and properties of a gas. One of them is temperature, another one pressure, volume, and the fourth. Uh, we need constant number of particles. Okay, so uh, you probably remember doing some labs in first year chem, and we'll look at some things in class too, some demos. 
Uh, you had a syringe. I always think of this syringe lab in first year chem when I think of Boyle's Law. You have some air in a syringe, and as you push down on the syringe and you apply an increase of pressure, you see the volume go down, or vice versa. At a small volume, you're applying the most pressure on those gas particles. But you have to have a closed container, which is why they say up here we need a trapped gas. In a closed container, the number of gas particles is constant. If I push in on a syringe, but I don't have a closed container, then the gas particles are just going to leak out. If the gas particles leak out, then I could be applying an increase of pressure, but I'm not really seeing a change in volume. I also need to have a constant temperature, because temperature could again affect volume of a gas or the pressure. If I increase the temperature, those gas particles are going to have more kinetic energy, which might cause more collisions, more pressure, or if I have a volume that's or I'm in a container that's not rigid, a container like a balloon, the gas should expand, so I would not get an accurate reading of volume and pressure if I change either of these variables, temperature or number of particles. If we were to graph Boyle's Law, which is usually what you do in first year chem, you take this syringe and you apply pressure and you measure like how much pressure is recorded at particular volumes. You'll get a graph that looks kind of like this. Here's a good graph of an inversely proportional relationship, which kind of means that if I increase the pressure, I will decrease the volume. They're oppositely related or inversely proportional. My highest pressures show my smallest volumes. And again, I'd want to be able to explain that in terms of particle behavior. So I would say, okay, you know, if I have a small volume, those particles are going to be condensed. And per surface area, there would be more collisions. More collisions creates more pressure. So qualitatively, I'd be able to explain something like Boyle's Law. And quantitatively, we can look at calculations with Boyle's Law. So here's kind of a nice visual, too, that shows, you know, as I decrease the volume, I've got the same amount of particles, so it's a closed container, but there's less surface area for those particles to collide. So there should be more collisions creating more pressure. Sulfur dioxide is the gas that smells like somebody, I don't know, like puked rotten eggs or something. It's kind of like that sulfur gas smell, and uh, it is present in acid rain. Uh, and in the exhaust of automobiles and power plants. Uh, so we've got a 1.53 liter sample of sulfur dioxide at a particular pressure. They're measuring it in just regular pascals. If the pressure changes, so we're going to increase the pressure at constant temperature, and it also does need to be a closed container so the number of particles remain constant, what will be the new volume? When variables are inversely proportionate, their equation, if we say, uh, should look kind of like a multiplication. We said before that pressure times volume should always be a constant. So I should be able to set these two conditions equal to each other then, and we can solve for a variable. I mean, again, this would be like, I don't know, maybe fifth grade math, right? Oh, wait a second. Maybe fifth graders can't do scientific notation. So sixth or seventh. Uh, let's plug this in our calculator. Let's see what we got. All right, my initial conditions, my P1, V1, 5.6 times 10 to the third pascals. Oh, we use kilopascals more often. Times 1.53 liters. My final conditions. 1.5 times 10 to the fourth Pascal. And we're solving for V2, the new volume. So I can plug this in my calculator and get a 0.571 liters. Now, 
some things that I like. Uh, if this were multiple choice, obviously you wouldn't have numbers like this that you would probably want to use a calculator for. Uh, but that could give you some manageable numbers that I could manipulate without a calculator. Uh, but I like that you can check and see if your answer is reasonable or if it is multiple choice and by chance your calculator dies in the middle of this problem, you should at least be able to narrow down your answer to some reasonable choices. If I'm increasing the pressure, the volume should go down. So I'm looking for a volume less than 1.53 liters. Uh, the other thing that we'll make note of too is that uh, you can really use any units with pressure and volume as long as they're the same before and after. So you could use pressure in any unit. It could be kilopascal, atmospheres, torr, millimeter mercury. And the volume, you know, as long as it's the same, it'll probably be liters or milliliters. Uh, any unit is totally acceptable when using Boyle's Law. So in a nutshell, I would be able to understand the relationship between pressure and volume, both quantitatively by doing a calculation like this, and qualitatively, you know, why does the pressure uh, increase as I decrease the volume? I should be able to qualitatively explain that in terms of particle behavior, which I'm sure you all can do. Super easy. You're going to love gas laws.